Welcome, everybody, to the Metal Command Podcast. I'm joined yet again by Mark Zonder, of course. Uh, we just had him on the show talking about Warlord and a little bit of the A to Z thing going on. And I have Nick Van Dyke, uh, who, of course, is a guitar player in Redemption, who put out a fantastic album uh, last year and uh, who has put out a series of great records, actually, and who is also playing on the new A to Z album. So, gentlemen, it's great to have you here, and I'm really looking forward to talk some music with you today. Well, thanks for having us, Tony. Great to be here, Tony. So, I, I've I've heard some of the rough mixes of the album. I, I Nick, just so you know, I told Mark that this was the la the first album was like a perfect record like everything about it from the songwriting to the production to the performances i thought were fantastic and now you have another record coming out and i think it's a little heavier uh i th i think everything about it sounds amazing and it's like i think it sounds like it's going to be better than the previous one so how did you guys get involved together to play on this and I know you guys known each other for a while, but Nick, you know, talk about Nick or Mark, whoever wants to, to jump in on this. How'd you guys get together to uh, play on this record? I think this will be like Rashomon, where there are two slightly different takes on the same story, but I'll bet they they're consistent. So, Mark, you should go first, and then I'd love to oh. get my version. Okay. Uh, well, basically, you know, I did the first record. It was one of those things. You know, we we've talked to him. We've done the interview for that one too, and. It basically, you know, it was, it's, it's like my idea. I mean, it's like I got to that point where I played in enough bands and not that I wasn't, I was told what to do, but there's certain things I wanted to do and I couldn't do them because, you know, it's a group and everybody has a say or there's another leader. So when I started this, I had, you know, very, very distinct ideas and we did the first record. I hook up with guys. I was very transparent saying, hey, this is what I want to do. Everything worked out great. And then basically what happens is the record comes out and Long story short is they don't want to go out and play it live, which was kind of funny because when we got together in the beginning, I said, hey, this isn't a project. You know, I want to have a band. I want to go play this music live. We're going to go do this. So basically, they disappear for three or four months, and I just said to myself, I can't sit here and be held hostage by these guys. No response whatsoever. You know, they have a record that charted. They probably have more Facebook hits and posts than they ever had in their life. Everybody got paid. It was, I don't understand the problem. I was very open. Um, tried to get in touch with it, just nothing, you know, zero. So I said, I can't, I can't wait for this. So I started to go out and finding other people to write with, and nothing was really coming across too much, and it just wasn't really happening, but I knew I couldn't just sit here. So me and Nick, you know, we go to see Kansas, and, you know, we're, it, it rolls around where, hey, you know, hey, why don't we start writing music together? Nothing to do with A through Z, just let's start writing music together. Let's see what we can come up with. You know, we talked about it for, what, 30 years or something, or, yep. you know, Something, something crazy. Um, and so we start writing. Everything's great. It's really, really cool. And then, moving right ahead, there's the Heavy Metal Hall of Fame induction with Chris and Pelletieri and Lou Graham. And I'm playing with um, Chris just like three songs or whatever. And Nick comes. You know, he's, he's coming. And I'll never forget, we're standing backstage kind of thing. And, it's, you know, it's a bunch of people standing around, a bunch of noise and so on and so forth. And Nick says to me, he goes, hey, you know, I know you put a lot of time and energy and effort in it. And if you want to take this music, well, when we can do A through Z, he goes, I'm good with that. You know, so I didn't know whether to marry him or kiss him on the lips at that time. <laughs> I, mean, I, was, I was a little confused. But no, that's how it got to there. We didn't start off going, hey, Nick, let's go do A through Z. This kind of started kind of just Nick and I and see where it was going to go. And then when he said that, uh, I thought it was a beautiful thing. It really... Um, it was a beautiful thing from a business band kind of thing that, okay, great to continue, but just for someone to have that much thought and um, compassion, I guess you could see. Because he, he knew the whole thing. He saw the whole thing from start to where it wound up at. And the fact that he wanted to be able to help pick that up and keep it going instead of just letting it die after all that hard work and everything, uh, I, I was very impressed and very touched. That's sweet of you to say. I think that's... Um pretty consistent from my standpoint and you know i've obviously been a, a, a fan of marks for 40 years now um and a friend for close to 30 um so the opportunity to work with mark has always been something that i wanted to do and we did go to that kansas show and talking about how there, there aren't that many bands making music that is not 
so progressive that it's trying to force it down your throat, but it's a little bit more interesting and you know, sort of tweaks the normal formula. And he's like, why don't you want to do something like this? And like, I'd love to do that. So we started working on some stuff and started vibing immediately. And then we did go to the show and look, I, uh, I was not involved in, uh, the, the first A to Z record, obviously. Um, and I, I, I don't know, you know, I, I know Viv, I don't know you and obviously great players. So I didn't have any vested interest in any of that, but I know that Mark had said he had, he had parted ways and we were talking about working on music and I, I was aware of how much time and effort he had put into, into building that momentum. I'm like, you know, look, I, if, if you want to call whatever we're working on the next A to Z record, I got, I, I'd love to do that. Whatever you want to do with it is great with me. I'm just happy to be working with you. And so Mark, who has been the, the father of this project and by the way, who has frankly, like constantly tried to talk down how responsible he is for this. And is so inclusive and so happy to work with others and so happy to take their ideas, but really puts his heart and soul into this. So it's, it's just a privilege to be involved. And I'm incredibly gratified that, uh, it's turned out as well as it has. And, and most importantly, that Mark is one of my musical heroes is as excited about it as I am. I would agree because I, he, when I, when I heard some of the rough mixes, you know, there are bands that send me stuff a lot that will say, Hey, what do you think of this song? Or what do you think of this mix? And I could hear, you know, the cool thing was Nick, I could hear some of, your style in, in some of this music, but it didn't like, I didn't listen to it and think, man, it sounds exactly like redemption. And I, and I say that because Ray Alder is singing on it. He was in redemption for, for quite a few records, obviously. And, but it didn't sound like that. You know, it, it, it's it sounded, funny. I, I tried yeah. specifically to write a little bit differently. Look, this is, this is meant to be like really, you know, accessible hook driven, great, you know, beefy like journey on steroids great you know just great songwriting with hooks and there are a couple of times when i'm like eh, there's a little bit of redemption in this bridge or there's a little bit of redemption in this verse but it's still it never really tipped over into you know the i wanted to keep a fairly clean line but it's still i write the way i write and what's neat about this is the the give and take between mark who's this is this is an album and i, I don't want to speak for Mark, who has a probably better handle on the creative vision than me. This is a lot about groove and there's, you know, there's groove and redemption too, but this is really about accessibility and Mark's drumming and his longstanding collaboration with Philip Bino, who's an incredible bass player. And the, the way that, and, you know, Ray contributed lyrics and, and melodies. So it's going to sound a little bit different than the, the way I would write for redemption, but the give and take, between me sending Mark ideas or him sending me ideas and then going back and, and reworking that until it gets really dialed in was a new and really cool experience for me. And I think it shows in the songs. No, absolutely. The, the a really funny story is the very, very, very first song that Nick sent me, as I remember, um, wound up being the quote, most progressive on the record. And it was like, we started there and, and I tried to apply my touch to it to kind of bring it in. You know, there were sevens and fives, and it was kind of, okay, let's make these tens and fourteens so it's going to groove and everybody can follow it. But it seemed, I think, it was weird because, in a good way, that after we kind of got that thing going, everything that Nick sent me after that, he kind of, not adapted and changed, but he got it. He got, okay, we're, 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 let's go this way. And there's still, yeah, I think that the main difference between the two records, basically, is this one, there's a little bit more playing. There's a little bit more of guys really stretching out and also the fact of the songwriting is just has a little bit more of an edge to it it actually has a mm -hmm. lot more of an edge to it right um, and again though it's the same philosophy everybody just do whatever you want you know do whatever you want i don't think i ever said to somebody dude that lead sucks don't play that you know do, do something else or i don't think anybody really said anything like that it's just you get guys at a certain caliber and you don't ha hopefully have to do that mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and, so there, and there was there was like an unspoken, like I would send a, a, a demo to Mark, he would come back and and the groove on the drums might be a little bit different, or he would play some really cool inventive stuff, and I'd be like, oh, I get it, and then I would redo a little bit of the guitar to sort of 
be lockstep with what's happening on the drums and the bass is, of course, completely dialed in. It's actually really neat the way it came together. Mm -hmm. I, again, I think it really, really proves, and it's something that you know you can put on my headstones. But when you're working with pros, it's easy, and when you're not, and all you need is one guy in a band that doesn't hold up his little thing, mm -hmm. and, and it feels like you're just grinding it out on a on a train track and going nowhere. I mean, this came together and moved so quickly, and I think the word efficiently it comes into play. Um, it, again, I just re reaffirm my belief that you know quality is quality. Yeah. I think musical chemistry has a lot to do with that as well, because oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, you could bring in pro guys that have been accomplished and have done a lot, but if they just don't mesh musically, you know, you know, on top of that, it just doesn't work. Well, what happened in between getting together with Nick is, you know, I, I, I wrote with some guys, you know, big name guys, you know, little name guys. No, there's no Richie Blackmore involved, but like guys that, you know, but the thing that the difference was is Nick paired kind of like what the drums were doing and what the vision was. It wasn't like, hey, here's my part. If you like it, great. And if you don't, that's okay too. And mm -hmm. I'm going to go on and do whatever. It Everybody kind of bought in. And I know that's, a, I hate that expression, but everybody bought into it. And it wasn't like, hey, man, I need to have my this and I need to have my lead and my bass solo or whatever. And it was just, again, when you work with professionals, you know, that are high quality and they get it. It's lovely. You know, I think, I think Bino after the last record said to me with all the, the turmoil or problems, what happened with not going out and playing live goes, man, I thought making the record was supposed to be the hard part, you know, yeah. and making the record was a walk in the park. I mean, it was, it was great. I looked, I woke up every morning excited as hell. Nick probably has 275 texts from me, man, I'm in the car. I just listened to number six, man, it's kicking my ass. I mean, I'm, I, I, I just couldn't help myself how, excited i was about it yeah you know i think the problem a lot of people run into when it comes to let's say for example you're talking about the vision i i think a lot of people get caught up into and, I, and i've been not only have i been have i dealt with people like that but i've been that person way way back in the day when i was younger where you know you want to put some kind of stamp on it that when really you should just write what what's right for the song you know i don't know if it's, it sounds kind of hard to explain but like for example you know obviously if you listen to the last redemption album I mean, it's a pretty heavy record you know and the one before that and they're both phenomenal records but when you listen to these songs there's a little bit of that heaviness in into the music but it really didn't change a lot of what was going i mean it changed a little bit in my opinion for the better but it didn't really change what a to z was right and you know the nick the way you're talking about it it almost feels like hey i wrote what was right for the songs that were there or what mark was playing and and unfortunately you run into this mentality with some folks that they don't do that i gotta put my stamp i gotta put this here i don't care if it fits or not it's gonna be there and that's why i think the first record and even what I've heard from this new one, I think is that's why I think these songs are great. Actually, what you just described was uh, part of my career with Fate's Warning. Took every okay. lit, took every riff I had and just tried to shove it in sideways. And, you mm -hmm. know, and it, then I kind of grew up and then you start listening a little bit more and say, well, as much as that riff is cool, Mark, it doesn't really quite work. <laughs> you yeah. know. But uh, yeah, no, I know. I'm going to disagree with you there, Mark. I think what you played with Face Warning worked great. <laughs> but okay, I'll, I'll go with that. But trust, <laughs> trust me, hey. you should see it's on the cutting room floor at times. You, you know, the biggest discussion in Face Warning was a Mark busted out the old cowbell. You know, and it was like, what the hell's that? You know, what, what's going on? So kind of working yeah. on. You know, yeah. it worked, but you know. You know what, Mark? If you listen to the interview with myself and Giles, I think he would disagree with you on that. He would agree okay. with Nick. Okay. Okay. Although we, we had our cowbell moment on this record too. So. Oh, oh, dude, I got nine of them. I got to use it. You know, they were, they, were, they were talking to me in my sleep. You know, it's like, play me, play me. Well, that really actually goes back to Warlord and Lucifer's Hammer. That's like that, you know. Yeah. But I always love that with Ian Pace and Deep Purple and, you know, and uh, you oh, yeah. one and all those kind of guys that were playing that kind of stuff. I always thought it was cool. Cozy Powell played it all the time. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And those are some legendary, legendary guys too. Oh, absolutely. 